this video, I'd like to show you how to go about learning and memorizing the first movement to Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. So, the first thing you need to do, if you want to learn this with me, is go to the website, truepianolessons.com, um, download or print off the music. You can find it in the music library. And um, I will show you how to divide the music up into phrases. The reason you want to use the one that I'm using, it is many editions, you might even already have the music out there, but by using the music that I've written um, on the, on the um, website, you'll be able to get my fingerings and also see how I divide it up in phrases. I have the phrases marked A, B, C, and so forth. So um, just so you can better stay with me, it might be best to use the music that I've, that I've printed up and, um, or that I've written on the computer. You will also, um, in a moment, see how I divide the music up and we'll be able to work together on that. I'll just do two or three measure segments at a time, working with the right hand and the left hand. When I do that on the video, I'll just show it once or twice, but it's your job to you know, pause the video and just work and work and work until you get it and then go on with the next part of the video. I won't be obviously repeating over and over on the video to save time. Um, let's get started. And I want to just point out a couple things. Make sure you close, pay close attention to the fingering and um, watch my pedaling. I'll, probably, I'll put the uh, camera where you can see my foot and, and pay close attention to when I change the pedal. I'll mention that as well, but when I don't mention it, it's up to you to sort of observe it, all right? So I think that being said, we'll get started. This first uh, section will include the phrases A, B, C, D, and E, and then there will be two, uh, three more videos after that to show the rest of the piece. Hopefully we will not take too much time on the video, but you can take a lot of time on your own going slowly, being patient, and see if you can get the whole thing learned and memorized using this method I'm going to show you. All right, so here we go. So real quick here, I'm going to show you how to divide it up for what we're going to work on. The first phrase, the A phrase, you can see goes five measures. And we're going to divide this one up into a group of three and a group of two. I do that because the first two measures are really simple and then the, the, the three here are a little more complex, at least these two are. So I sort of divide them up to make it a little bit easier to learn this and then these, okay? Then the B phrase is also five measures long. But this one we're going to do three measures and then two. I'm sorry, two measures and then three. So I'm going to divide it right there. So we'll do these two and then these three. The C phrase also five measures long. And I'm going to divide that one into two plus three as well. So I'll put the dividing line right there. The D phrase is just four measures. So that's an easy one to figure out. We'll just do two plus two on that. And the E phrase, two plus two. And that will conclude the section that we're gonna work on. So if you can divide your music up like that visually, it's gonna help you stay with me, all right? So, all right. Um, so, as I said, this is a series of rolling chords. So I'm going to so show you how if you block through the chords, which means play the whole chord together instead of rolling it, it's going to be a quicker way to get this thing memorized. A solid way of teaching your hand the shapes and the images that you're going to be seeing on the key. Okay. So here we go with the A phrase. And the A phrase, the first three measures, right hand by itself, blocking. The first chord is a C-sharp minor chord. We're going to play it like this with a one, two, four fingering. You play it four times. I'm going to use the pedal while I block. And then the next measure, I change the pedal, but the chord stays the same, like that. There's four more of those. And then you change your thumb goes to A. It's an A major chord. I just keep the fingering. And then it goes to a D major chord. One, three, five. You change the pedal there. And then the first chord of the next half is this. It's a G, G sharp seven chord. Your thumb, second finger, this would normally be called a C, but since it's part of a G sharp chord, it's a B sharp. And that's our B sharp seven chord. Now I'm gonna go through those one more time. I was just sort of showing you the fingerings there, but this time I'll, I'll be quiet and just let you watch. Next measure, change.
first three measures of the A phrase. Do that so you have it memorized. And then left hand is just playing a C sharp on the first measure, octave C sharp, down to a D, change pedal on it, change pedal again. This is part of that D major chord, the F sharp, and then it steps up to the root of the G sharp chord. So play through that in the left hand until you have it memorized, it's not too tough, and then put them together. Still blocking the right hand part, so like this. Trying to keep a bit of a beat here. And then, once you can do that and have done it several times by memory, you're ready to play it as written. So you'll play it like this. And I'm gonna just go nice and slow, but you could go even slower if you need to. To the next two measures. So you do the first three measures, blocking the right hand, playing the left hand, putting both together with the right hand blocking till you have it memorized, and then playing it as written several times by memory. I just did it once to save time on the video, but you can do it many times. And then move on to the second half. Now we're gonna do the same process. Right hand blocking. The first chord is that G sharp seven chord. And then in the next beat, you have to play a new chord, C sharp minor, it's G sharp, C sharp, E. And then I'm going to move my four and my five down and play the suspended chord. It resolves to a G sharp seven chord. And then I like a one, two, four fingering on this C sharp minor chord. Then you invert it up. And then I like to switch to my third finger the second time I play that. And then our melody comes in for the first time. So you put the melody on top. And that's the first chord of the next phrase. So let me block through those one more time. Changing the pedal every time. And then our melody. And then once you have that memorized, the left hand part is pretty easy. G sharp, and again goes to what we call a C-sharp power chord. And the power chord is sort of just a pop term, a pop music term, but I like to use it because it's descriptive of an octave with a fifth in the middle. So C-sharp power chord. And then the first chord of the B phrase, we go to this. Okay, so those again, G-sharp, G-sharp, C-sharp power chord. And then this is the, uh, the third of the G-sharp major chord. See? Okay, now once you have the left hand memorized, it's time to put them together. I'll show you once with the right hand blocking. Okay, and when you're blocking and the melody is on top, try to bring out that melody. I just tried that, I, I sort of exaggerated a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna do it as written, which is the final step. You will have done it several times blocking first by memory. Okay, I forgot to do my finger switch to the third and it was a little awkward, hopefully you caught that. Anyway, now, once you've done that, till you had it memorized several times, you're ready to put the whole phrase together. Now, the first time you put the whole phrase together, you could go through blocking like this. I'm gonna go from the, the beginning of the A phrase. So I'm gonna kinda go quickly to save time. You don't have to go this fast.
halfway point, and then I'm going to go from there. but that was just to save a little time. Now you can go ahead and play it as written and I'll put the stop in there again. Putting the stop in where we divided it up helps you keep track of in your mind where you are in the piece. You never get lost if you do it this way. So here we go one time with the stop. I'm kind of still going slow but I don't think it's as slow as you should be going when you first learn it. You could be going second half. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the final step, which is to play the whole phrase without the stop in the middle. Now, I'm, let me just demonstrate real quick how slow you probably should be going when you're first learning it. going to do that right now. It takes a lot of extra video time, so you don't need that. You can do that on your own. But eventually here, um, a, a good tempo for you to start aiming for, and this is not necessarily the final performance tempo, but it's getting close, would be a 42 for the quarter note, which goes like this. when you don't have the metronome on you'll probably take a little time here and there I just did it straight through with the metronome to show you that's what you're aiming for before you start adding all the, the musical elements of time so anyway that was the A phrase once you've got all that memorized you're ready to move on to the B phrase right. so now the B phrase we're gonna go ahead and, and divide it up a little bit differently it's a five measure phrase and it's um it's gonna be divided two plus three so we're going to do the first two measures, but I'm going to include the pickup from the A phrase so we have that melody. So here we go, blocking the right hand. We just finish with a C sharp minor chord with a melody on top. And then you switch to this chord right here, which is the G sharp 7 chord. Back to the C sharp minor. This goes to F sharp minor. And we're going to finish E major. So octave G sharp with a B and an E in the middle. Okay? I'm gonna do that one more time. And that's the right hand. We'll work on that till it's memorized. The left hand again is pretty simple. You start it out with the G sharp major chord, going to C sharp root of the F sharp minor chord. And then when you play the B, we're on an E major chord. This is the fifth note of an E chord. And that's what the left hand does. So now, once you get the left hand memorized, we put them together, blocking the right hand still. Now, um, in the previous measure, since we're doing the pickup, left hand was holding that C sharp power chord. So play that and then get started. memorized it's time to play them as written. I'll do the power chord here and then pick up. And once again I'm going pretty fast. You can go much slower. And that was the first half of the B phrase. Now once you get that memorized move on. Same routine on the second half. We're going to start with that E major chord in the right hand. And then 
Oh, I forgot to mention that this fingering, watch. I'm going to do this, and then on the second time I play that E chord underneath, I'm going to switch to a three here. It looks a little awkward and is a little awkward, but it helps you with the next chord, which is your fourth finger on this. And this is a B7 chord. It's B major with a seventh added here instead of up here. Okay, so we have this, and I play these two notes with the thumb. And then still these two notes with the thumb. And back to an E major chord. And I bring out the top note play three more of those and then it changes to E minor so the thumb move back down and then the first chord of the C phrase is a G with a seventh at it okay but you don't you don't use this note you use this one. <laughs> okay so let me do that one more time the, the right hand blocking assuming you've got the right hand memorized. It starts with the B. When you go to the B7 chord, you play a B again and finish with E. And the next measure, E again. And then it just steps down to D, which is part of that G7 chord. This is part of a G chord, see that? That's the fifth. So now we're gonna do both hands, assuming you've got both hands memorized, and we're blocking the right hand first. Once you have it memorized with the blocking of the chords, it's time to play it as written. And once again, I want to remind you, I'm going pretty fast. You should be going about this slow. When you're first learning a piece, ultra slow. Okay, but I'm going to go a little quicker to save time here. I like to clear that E out of there because Beethoven did put a rest there. And then you change pedal, of course, when you go to the E minor chord. Okay, now that was the second half of the B phrase plus the first chord of the C phrase. It's time now, once you've got that memorized, to put it all together. And again, the first time we do it, let's do it blocking. I'm going to go pretty quick through it. We're back to the, the pickup to the B phrase, which is this. You can block slower than I'm going to. Stop, because that's the second half, and then restart. phrase block with a stop in the middle. Now I'm going to play it as written with a stop in the middle. So here's our pickup. Oh, sorry. Started blocking again. And I just stop right on that and then restart. without the stop. And once again, I'll put it at uh, 42. I'm not going to leave the metronome on this time. I'll just sort of aim for that.
couldn't hear that B. All right. So that was the B phrase. And now, of course, once you've got that memorized, you can put the A phrase and the B phrase together. I'm not going to do that right now to save some time here on your video, but you're welcome, of course, to do that as many times as you want. And then time to learn the C phrase. So we'll just go right into it. The C phrase, we're going to block the right hand. And we're going to start with that G7 chord. And actually, we'll just do the let's do the pickup notes first. We still have the E minor chord here, and we're going to do the right hand going to the, the G7 chord. And then the middle note moves down. The middle note moves up, and then B minor and that's where we're going to stop. Just two measures of the C. Let's do that one more time. So we start with our E minor chord and then G7 for four beats. It goes to C major back to E minor and then there's this diminished seven chord which Beethoven likes uh, diminished seven chords. So you'll see a lot of those in this piece. It's this chord and then it becomes an F sharp seven which is the 5-7 of B minor. So work through those chords until you have it memorized. And then the left hand's turn. All right, the pickup note from the previous measure was E. And then you step down to D. And you just keep walking down. And this is where you hit that um, diminished 7 chord. And then back to B for the B minor. So work the left hand until you have it memorized and then both hands. Left hand's already holding the E, and we're going to put them together blocking. Okay, and of course, I, as usual, I went pretty fast, but it's just to show you how to block through it, you can go much slower. And then it's time to do it as written. Okay, this assumes you already have it memorized. So here we go with the pickup. And that was the first half of the C phrase. Now, the second half of the C phrase, right hand by itself, and of course this is assuming you've already memorized the first half of the C phrase, and we're going to do the next three measures. Ready? Right hand starts with a B minor chord, and then we have this neat suspension here. This is a neat chord here. It sounds a little bit strange, but... two of them like that, but then I switch to my third finger on the F sharp when it goes to B major. And this is the pickup to the D phrase. And that first chord of the D phrase is a neat suspended chord over E minor. So there's the E minor chord and he suspends it for a moment with that melody. Really neat. So now let's do that one more time. We've got B minor. Sort of the suspended E minor back to B minor, and the F sharp major, B minor. Of course you have to change pedal when you go to the major there. Okay, so that's how you block the right hand. The left hand, once you get the right hand memorized, left hand is, and I like a two, one, two fingering, switching to the thumb for the octave and then back to B. And then the B just holds for the rest of it. So now, once you get that memorized, put them together, blocking. Oh, I should have brought out the bottom note there. The melody goes right to the B there, so. Sorry, I didn't point that out earlier. Okay, and that, that 
just sort of brings up a point that when you're blocking like this, really focus on bringing out the top note, the melody. So now it's time to play it as written, the second half of the C phrase, as written. second half once you have that memorized and as usual you'll be going much slower than that at first um, but once you have it memorized back to the beginning of the C phrase and let's do the whole C phrase blocking and I'll put a stop in the middle just to mark that halfway point kind of the halfway point anyway here we go start. This is that B minor chord. And that time I brought out the B. Okay, that was the blocking. Now I'm going to do it as written after you've done it several times blocked and you could take the stop out when you're blocking too but the first time I'd put it in there because it helps mark that spot. Just like we're going to do now, we're going to put a stop in there. Nice stop, that marks our spot and then go from there. C phrase with a stop in the middle. Now we're going to take the stop out. And of course, you'll be going much slower when you first learn it, but I'm going to go ahead and play it. I was already playing it kind of fast, but I'll aim for a 42, which is still kind of slow for this. Some people played in the 50s, but here we go. the C phrase. Work on that till you have it memorized and you can do both hands several times perfectly by memory. And then of course you can put your A, B, and C phrase together, but now I'm going to move on to the D phrase. So the D phrase starts with the right hand. I'm going to do the, the pickup before that. It was a B major chord. The melody's on top. And then it goes to E minor. You get three of these. And on the fourth one you put an A sharp in there to B major, and it starts exactly the same, okay? So this is a, a four measure phrase, we're going to chop it into two and two, and, and the two measures and the two measures are very similar, but I'm still going to treat them as if they're different, because you have to work on them like that. So um, that was the right hand, let me do that one more time, the pick up, and then... actually be changing on each one of those chords. I forgot to change the pedal on that first measure. I'll show you where the left hand plays. Right hand memorized, left hand was holding this B, and then this measure I like to change the pedal with each one of these. And that's it. That's all there is to the left hand. It's just sort of outlining that B minor, that, oh sorry, the E minor chord. Now let's do both hands. Assuming you have the right hand blocked and memorized, the left hand also, it's time to put them together blocking. So the right hand has that B major chord. Now 
was it. Now once you get that memorized, go ahead and play it as written, like this. I'm gonna hold this, and then. So that was the first half of the B phrase. Once you get it memorized, the second half won't be very hard. I'm going to play the second half with the right hand blocking. The three of these again. And then back to the B major. And this is the only part that's different. And we finish with a C sharp 7 chord. So it's like a C sharp major with a 7th added. Okay, but you don't get to play the middle note. Anyway, that's the first chord of the E phrase. Okay, so let me go back and play the left hand. I, the, the right hand, I can, think you probably can get from what I just showed you. So now the left hand is doing the same thing it did on the previous one. You start with a B holding, and then change a pedal on each one of these. But then you have to add a G sharp going down to, on the keyboard it looks like an F, but it's written as an E sharp because it's part of that C sharp major chord. So now I'm going to put those together, blocking, assuming you've got both parts memorized. Left hand's holding a B, right hand, the B chord. And there's this diminished 7 chord, and then this C sharp 7 chord. Once you have that memorized, play it with a right hand rolling the chords as written. Oh, I almost did the first half of the D phrase. I wasn't thinking. So, here and then. Okay, I'm gonna do that one more time since I kind of blew it there. I'll try it again, ready? B major. second half of the D phrase. Once you have that memorized, go back and do the whole D phrase. The first time you do it, blocking, and we're still going to put the stop in the middle just to be consistent here. So, stop, and then restart. stops the final step and uh, you'll be going much slower but I'm gonna go ahead and take it a little bit faster again I sort of put my mark at 42 for the moment so stop in the middle. The final step, of course, is to do it without the stop. Okay, so here we go. getting a little bit loud. I don't really like how loud I'm playing it. But anyway, you got the idea how to learn that one. And of course, once it's memorized, go back and put A, B, C, D all together. But I'm not going to do that right now just to save time. Um, now let's move on to the E phrase. The same routine, right hand just finished with this C sharp seven chord. So block it. Going to F sharp major. And then a G major chord. 
diminished seven chords down to F sharp minor. Okay, so let me block that. I'll go a little slower this time. So I'm gonna watch F sharp major, F sharp minor, I mean, G major. Get that memorized. Left hand's turn. Left hand just walks up from this E sharp to the F sharp. And then right hand walks up. And this is underneath that F sharp minor chord. So I'm going to go ahead and memorize that and then put them together. played as written, like this. Okay. I think when I showed you the left hand, I accidentally played an octave there, and then I realized the right hand plays this. So left hand is on a single C sharp at the end of that. Okay. Now, we're ready to do the second half of the E phrase. Right hand is an F sharp minor chord twice, and then it suspends the C sharp major chord, see the suspension, and it resolves, and then back to F sharp minor, and you invert it up, invert it up again, and our melody comes in, and that is the beginning of the F phrase, and I consider that the next section. And this will be you know, the last phrase we'll do on this particular video. Let's do that one more time, right hand. Two F sharp minor chords. C sharp suspended. C sharp major. F sharp minor. And once that's memorized, left hand. Again, left hand has a single C sharp. And then I like to switch to a second finger so I can play an F-sharp power chord. And then the first chord of the F phrase, it's a C-sharp major chord, C, C-sharp major. Okay. Now once you have the left hand memorized there, it's time for both hands. So I'm going to block them. Notice I bring out the F-sharp. you have that memorized, I'll do it many times, then it's time to play it as written. Now, I've kind of played these a little bit loud, but hopefully you noticed that. Anyway, once you have that memorized, it's time to put the whole E phrase together. Let's do it once blocking with a stop in the middle. Stop, there's the halfway point, now go from there. stop in there. And then from there. step, of course, is to go ahead and play the whole phrase with no stops. Let me get my spot here somewhere around 42. I was already kind of playing it that fast. Uh, once again, I want to remind you, when you're first learning it, 
go much, much slower. Now, let me show you that about really slow. You could literally be taking it this slow when you're first working on the piece. It'll give you much more control. You'll build in your control going that slow, okay? If you've read the book that I wrote, um, Piano Player You, you will see that in there. There's a whole section about going slow and how important it is. But I, I, I got off track there. Let me go ahead and play this as written, the whole phrase. And then I'm doing it up to 42 to show you close to what it will be someday. So then when you have that whole section learned, from the A all the way to the E, you can go ahead and put them together. And this time I'll go ahead and just play through the whole thing for you, and that'll be the end of this video, and then you can move on to the, uh, the next section. But here's how the whole thing would sound. There is the whole first section going from A phrase all the way to the F phrase. So now go ahead and find the uh, video for the next one and get started on it. Good luck with that.